In this video, I'll be showing you how to check piston to valve clearance using a dial indicator or a set of feeler gauges. You will need a degree wheel to check your piston to valve clearance using a dial indicator. So if you're unfamiliar with a degree wheel or how to set one up, I have a video that will help you. To do this test, you should use checking springs. So what a checking spring is, is basically a very soft spring. It's got enough tension that it will hold the valve closed but very little tension so you can easily push on it and you will need to press the valves down to do these tests. So here, All I did to find checking springs was go to a local hardware store I found a spring like this uh, I think it was maybe a dollar I just took my retainers with me top part here and matched the spring up to something that would work with the retainer this is obviously a bit longer than I need so one spring I was able to cut in half and make two springs so that I could do both sides with just the cost of one spring. If you don't know how to replace valve springs, I have a few videos up that will show you different methods to do it. Now the engine is assembled with whatever base gasket I'm using in place, head gasket, cams installed, everything is just the way I would assemble it normally. One exception is that I like to set my valves to zero lash. So that means instead of having, say, two to three thousandths inches of play, as I normally would, or two to three thousandths inch valve lash, then I try to have zero lash, which essentially means there's no play between the rocker arm and the valve. You don't want it tight so that it's actually pushing on the valve, but just so there's no play. So I'll go ahead and set this one just to show you. So I'll loosen up my adjuster nut and I kind of wiggle the rocker arm to feel it and I can feel there's just a tiny bit of play there so I'll tighten the adjuster and wiggle it again still feel just a small small amount of play and I'll keep tightening that until there's no play but it's not pressing on the valve Okay, so now there's no play, but it doesn't appear to be putting any pressure on the valve. So I can go ahead and tighten this up. And you'll want to repeat that and do the same thing for the intake and the exhaust. Now you'll need to set up a dial indicator so that you can measure how far you're pushing the valves downward before they contact the piston. A couple of notes on setting up a dial indicator. Number one is to make sure you have a secure surface to mount the dial indicator on and that the engine is secure. In this case, I've just got a piece of wood and some steel because I have a magnetic base for my dial indicator. So I had that strapped down to my bench that way it can't move around and if you look over here I also have the engine strapped down to the bench because I don't want it to move so when you're setting up a dial indicator you need both things to be secure because if they can move relative to each other then they will throw off your readings you won't be able to get you won't be able to reproduce an accurate reading every time the other option if you're not using a magnetic base and putting the dial indicator somewhere else is to come up with some sort of bracket or maybe a plate that mounts to the engine that you could then either mount a magnetic base to or just mount the dial indicator directly to and position that onto the engine that way they both move together if there is any movement you should set up the dial indicator so that it makes contact with the valve spring retainer here on a flat surface and so that it can move up and down when the valve moves. When you're setting it up you'll want to try and keep the dial indicator at a very similar angle to the actual valve and valve spring and look at it from this side from the top view try to make sure again that the adjuster and the indicator and valve are all coming in at roughly the same angle. 
You also want to make sure that these aren't so close together that the indicator and the rocker arm or adjuster end up interfering with each other and hanging up. So go ahead and press that down via the rocker arm and make sure it moves freely without binding anywhere. So now you'll need to get in the ballpark and find the correct top dead center to work around. Since a four stroke has two top dead centers for one revolution of the camshaft because the camshaft moves at half crank speed, the piston will come to the top of the cylinder to top dead center twice before the camshaft is finished rotating once. So you need to find the correct top dead center. If you have just set your valve lash, you are on the incorrect top dead center if you've set your valve lash properly. Your valve lash setting should be done between the compression and power stroke at top dead center. And you need to be between the exhaust and intake strokes at top dead center. So that's 180 degrees away for the camshaft or 360 degrees away for the crankshaft. I'll show you a couple of quick ways to figure out which one you're on. Number one, your camshaft may have markings like this to show you which is the correct top dead center. So you'll see a hole or a marking at the top here and then you have the lines and holes that run parallel to the top surface of the head. This is the wrong top dead center. So what you would need to do is rotate the engine around so the camshaft is 180 degrees the opposite direction. So I'll show you what I mean. So now I've rotated the engine. Again, I've got these lines aligned with the head, but the hole to tell me where the other top dead center is is exactly on the opposite side on the very bottom down here. And if I look at my degree wheel, I'm on zero degrees top dead center right now. So this is the correct top dead center. Another easy way to check with any engine is to look at the lobes on the camshaft and the rockers. If your rockers are on the base circle and the lobes on the camshaft are nowhere near opening or closing, you are on the wrong top dead center. But if you see that the camshaft, the lobes are about to either open or close, depending which valve you're looking at, you should be on the correct top dead center. I have the dial indicator set up on the intake valve, so I will need to check between about 0 and 20 degrees after top dead center. And the easiest way for me to think of after top dead center and before is that I know the engine rotates in this direction. So when I rotate it in this direction, this 20 will come after the zero for top dead center. So in the direction of engine rotation, this is after top dead center. So this would be before top dead center in my case, and this would be after top dead center in this case. So I'll just start with a zero degree measurement right at top dead center. So before I can check any measurements, I will need to zero my dial indicator at the current position. And it's a good idea to press on the valve just to make sure it actually returns to zero. Now I've double checked. My degree wheel is still right on zero degrees and my dial indicator is still zeroed so what I'll do is I'll put pressure right on the tip of the adjuster here to push the rocker arm down and push the valve down and I'll push it all the way down until the valve stops because it's contacting the piston and when I do that I will watch the dial indicator to see how far it travels around so I'll go ahead and put pressure here and now it's stopping against the piston and it's stopping on about 14 to 15 thousandths there which it's actually traveled around the opposite direction so I know that's about 84 to 85 thousandths of an inch clearance that I have and you can double check just to make sure you get the same reading each time and that you go back to zero an alternative to a dial indicator could just be a set of feeler gauges that's the same thing that you would normally use to set your valve clearance Everything would be set up the same way that you do with a dial indicator except obviously without the dial indicator because instead of using a dial indicator to measure the distance that your valve is being able to press down before it hits the piston 
you would use a stack of feeler gauges. So here I have a stack of about 70 thousandths worth of feeler gauges. And what I would do is try to press down on the valve and see if I could fit those between the valve and the rocker arm. And you can see that I can fit those between the valve and the rocker arm and actually I have a little more clearance there. So I'll switch around my feeler gauge configuration so that it's a little thicker and I'll try it again. And this time it again fits. So what I would do is I would keep using, I would keep going up on size until eventually the feeler gauge doesn't fit. And the one right before it didn't fit would be what my piston valve clearance is. Then since this is the intake valve and I'll be checking between 0 and 20 degrees after top dead center, I'm going to move 5 degrees at a time. So right now I'll go to 5 degrees after top dead center. Because the valve is moving, you'll notice that your dial indicator is no longer zeroed. So each time you move the crankshaft, you rotate the crankshaft, you will need to re-zero your dial indicator. And again, I'll push down on my rocker arm here until the valve touches the piston and note the reading. And this time it has moved about 77 thousandths of an inch. And then you'll just want to repeat the exact same process, 5 degrees at a time. So you would again move to 10 degrees after top dead center for the intake valve. Go back, press the valve down, note the measurement on the dial indicator. Then you would move to 15 degrees after top dead center. Do the same thing, press down until you hit the piston with the valve, note the reading and then move to 20 degrees after top dead center and continue the same process. So that's for the intake valve. Once you finish that, check over all the numbers you have recorded from 0 to 20 degrees for your intake valve and then you'll want to see where the two smallest numbers were. So say you get 70 thousandths at 5 degrees and 75 thousandths at 10 degrees and the others are you know maybe 80 thousandths we'll say then you may wish to check degree by degree or halfway between 5 and 10 thousandths and see if you get a smaller number that way you can find your minimum piston to valve clearance after you finish the first valve then you'll need to set up your dial indicator on the opposite valve so I've done the intake now I've set up my dial indicator on my exhaust valve just the same way that I showed you for the intake valve, you want it on the spring retainer, try to keep the angle similar, and you want to make sure that the dial indicator has room to travel with the valve. For the exhaust valve, I'll be checking between 0 degrees, top dead center. Again, this is between the exhaust and the intake stroke. And between there and 20 degrees before top dead center. When you do these checks, it's a good idea to follow the direction of engine rotation. So rather than going from 0 to 20, I would start 20 before and move my way to 0 because that's the way the engine rotates and that's following the profile of the cam just the way it normally would when the engine is in operation. So what you can do is either back up a bit before the 20 and then work your way back to 20 or you could rotate the engine all the way around until you're on the proper stroke again and start at the 20. After you've completed each check on both sides, you should know your minimum piston to valve clearances for both the intake and the exhaust valve. I'll just tell you very quickly that for these small engines, I would recommend 50 thousandths of an inch clearance on the intake and 80 thousandths of an inch clearance on the exhaust side, and those should be safe numbers. If you would like more detailed information about piston to valve clearance and how to change it, then I have another video that I'll link you to here. If this video helped you out or you learned something, please like it, favorite, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.